Welcome back. Let's tackle that issue as well. Joanne, this looks like a good move from the regulator, but remember we're still within the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, if 35% of this cannot actually afford to pay these premiums and claims that are now synonymous within the economy, do you think that despite them revising this or making it a softer ground for these insurance companies that this is bound to continue as well? Um, unfortunately, I think that um, this trend will continue in 2021 as we try to come out of the COVID um, effects of COVID. Yes. Um, for me, I think the option would be, like Arnold said, um, a merger of these uh, companies that is at the, 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 the capital level. Um, of course, that will keep them in business. That will, will um, um, they will share, of course, they will share their, their market. Uh, at the same time, maybe they will come up with products that are, that, that, that they will think through and come with solutions that, that will, um, that will help um, in, a, in the event of a similar COVID situation, maybe uh, years to come. So for me, I think that the solution is actually to, like Arnold said, to have a merger of these companies coming together and putting their minds together and just uh, being able to forge their, their, their strengths together. Victor, clear for us this conversation this morning. Well, that move by the regulator, even after making sure that, well, all the companies, even as they try to go through the COVID-19 pandemic, were still remaining capital adequate. Is it a good move in your, in your, in your, in your opinion? Um, you know, they have, they have economies of, uh, of scale. Yes. Um, uh, there is benefit when you, when you are operating a uh, lot. Uh, this, this benefit will be the ability to leverage on technology, the ability to uh, invest in research, and also the ability to lead the market in areas that even our colleague Anand has pointed out that we have a problem of, of uh, penetration. Uh, just imagine a population, uh, 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 four to eight percent penetration, and this is looking at um, uh, Kenya has had independence for over 55 years. So for me, I think there is a problem of innovation in the sector. Uh, the problem in the sector is not a, a policy or a regulatory sector because there is a regulated place that. Um, people are in business. Uh, why are we not seeing this uh, compared, for example, to the progress made by the banking sector? As you know, like in the UK, the insurance companies are the ones that own the banking sector. Yes. Tell me very clearly that uh, that uh, is a demonstration of high level of penetration of insurance. If even when you even look at South Africa, I think South Africa are doing like 40 percent uh, penetration. Now, for me, Arnold, the problem with the insurance sector of our country is that they are speaking a foreign language. They are not speaking the language that the ordinary person can understand. When you're telling me that, uh, please buy this insurance, uh, when you die, this is where your people uh, who will remain will benefit. Uh, in Africa, we do not invest in death. Uh, we, we, we believe we will be alive tomorrow. So for me, one of the, and, and since we're in the media here, let me not use technical terms. Let me yes. use uh, terms that uh, we can connect with our audience. I think the insurance sector is something like the equity, uh, equity model. You remember that for a long time, there were days where before you have a bank account, you needed to have 5,000, maybe some of you are young, in the, in, in the bank. And, and they, 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 basically what happened is that they threw out the rule book and they said all you require is your ID card and you in person, we take your picture. In fact, they removed even the going to bring passport size. They, they, they simplified the issue. And I'm using that as an example that you would hear people saying, I want to be a member of this. Even actually, that model was replicated across. So for me, the innovation panel that is needed and sector as their ability to speak the Kenyan language. What does having an insurance product mean on a day-to-day -day basis in a language that other people can understand? They, they, we, 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 we began this conversation by discussing the issue of maze. Uh, you remember? And, and 
in the in the sector in the agricultural sector people take insurance the reason why we build stores is that we are insuring so that when the time for bamba harvest happens we have a place to store basically that is an insurance uh so in my view is that the the the, the needs to come down from the high table and come to speak the language of the ordinary person because people would want to to know when when we talk about savings cooler wake up that for me is an insurance language so we we we, we need to uh, we need to speak the language of the ordinary person on matters insurance i've been in the financial sector i i, I chaired the unclaimed financial assets authority and i can tell you when these people can relate with the benefits of insurance yes. but we need to come from the the the, the, the mzungu language and speak the language of the ordinary person Arnold, let me bring you in on that as well i mean are we sidestepping the conversation when we're talking about what the regulator is trying to do? The regulator is looking at the companies that are already in the country that can't afford to even pay premiums, 35% of them good. Should the regulator be addressing issues that Victor is raising right now? If we have more penetration in the country in terms of insurance penetration, then that means that, well, these companies will not be struggling should that be the focus for the regulator? Yeah, I think that should be the focus for the regulator and all other stakeholders. Yes. It's, it's, it's actually a matter of penetration. If you have more consumers of what you're doing uh, in terms of business, you definitely have a better bargaining power in, yes. in any business. Decision. So I think that what the regulator is trying to do now is short term. Basically bringing in a, a consultant to try and amend or deal with the situation as far as uh, the current variables are concerned. But long term, I think penetration should be uh, should be key. And I agree with Vincent when he says insurance companies need to speak a local language. I think insurance companies over the years were only dwelling on uh, life covers uh, and probably health covers. But along the way, they've tried to diversify by bringing in uh, investment policies uh, and the like. And the idea is to essentially do more of that and basically even come up with premiums which are affordable to many um and, the, and if, if we can sort out the penetration issue i think these other issues will become secondary uh challenges and we won't have a situation whereby you have players in the industry who are not able to honor obligations in terms of maybe paying claims or uh, having uh, adequate capital ratios joanna in just a couple minutes just two minutes if you may that question has been with us for quite a long time for you, why do they need to begin to unlock the potential of the insurance industry within the country when we are not even talking about double digits? In fact, we're talking about less than 5%. The biggest we've ever seen is 3.7% back in 2017. What needs to be done to unlock the potential of the, of the industry in the country? Um, just like um, Vincent has said, I yes. Insurance companies, of course, need to uh, bring products that um, uh, are mm. more, I've said, not, maybe not more affordable, maybe um, products that, that resonate to the common man. Yes. The ones that every common man can identify and pick. Maybe they should begin with the, um, educating even the common man. You know of, of the importance of insurance why should you insure why should you you know that kind of thing so if if, if they're able to do that then they're able to get get a bigger to be get a bigger market because you're having more and more young people being you know getting into business being employed so if, if you begin with uh, educating the common monarchy and then that they can understand and uh, resonate with then i think that the, that that they begin with solving the problems there and there and uh, and then and then there's room to grow the products um i remember apa some time back came up with the uh, overwriting the rules of insurance so i i think they need to really to 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 really look at at what exactly they're offering and 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 bring something that is that that resonates with the common person yeah pretty much I would like to apologize that that's the own that's the that's the only time that we had for 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 you this morning because we do have one more issue that we weren't able to touch on but we promise we'll clear with that 
as we end the week. I would like to say thank you very much to Vincent Kimo Soap, John Waniki, and Arnold Nkisale for taking your time off your busy schedule this morning to speak to Metropole Television. We quite appreciate it. We come to the end of the show. Good morning.